This is the news on KBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. 21 additional people have recovered from the novel coronavirus, bringing the total number of recoveries in Jamaica to 311. Meanwhile, the health ministry has reported five new cases of COVID-19, increasing Jamaica's tally to 586. The five new cases are imported from recently repatriated Jamaicans processed in Falmouth, Trelawney, on the Carnival Glory and the MS Marina cruise lines. Two of the COVID-19 patients are critically ill. The work from home order issued by the government under the Disaster Risk Management Act expired on Sunday, giving way to the new Work Smart, Work Safe orders. The Ministry of Health is encouraging employers to implement policies concerning physical distancing of at least six feet and to make provisions for employees and visitors to clean their hands as necessary. The COVID-19 workplace protocol is a guideline document to be used as a basis for decision making by owners or operators of public establishments or facilities, employers are to put in place the universal preventative measures for preventing transmission of COVID-19. These measures apply to all workplaces and all persons at the workplace, such as employers, managers, workers, contractors, customers, and visitors. And there are some key areas of focus which I'd like to just highlight. Hand hygiene, uh, respiratory hygiene, physical or social distancing, risk communication, training and education, and provision of facilities for sick employees, for persons with symptoms. Uh, those are all covered, and we encourage employers, employees, and others to visit the website and to particularly play fo focus on those areas. While we are encouraging persons to go back to their place of work, we acknowledge that this may not be practical or feasible in all cases. We must examine our situational realities and determine what is appropriate. Persons who are immunocompromised with underlying illnesses that are not currently uh, under control by medical treatment and are therefore at risk, such persons will be required to present a medical certificate indicating that they are not at this time fit to work in an environment of general access which may expose them to increased risk during the pandemic. Jamaica reopens its borders on June 1. That announcement from Prime Minister Andrew Holness. The borders were closed to all incoming travelers on March 21, following an outbreak of COVID-19 in the country. During the period of June 1 to June 14, all individuals seeking to re-enter Jamaica will be subject to testing, except for those entering from a country within a travel bubble based on certain criteria. Their health status and risk assessment by a public health officer, Jamaicans seeking to re-enter will be subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine. So during the period June 1 to June 14, all persons seeking to re-enter Jamaica will be subject to testing except for those entering from a country within the travel bubble as defined on our, which we will give the specific criteria of those countries we consider to be within our bubble. Uh, and for clarity, Jamaicans returning from countries not considered to be within our travel bubble would be required to be tested and quarantined at home with either phone or wristband geofencing. The Prime Minister noted that if the number of cases starts to increase, the strict measures will be reimposed. Our response to the pandemic will continue to be measured and proportionate, evidence-based, and situationally appropriate. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement at a COVID-19 press briefing on Sunday at Jamaica House. The curfew which has been in place has again been extended with a few changes. The 
day to next day, night to early morning curfews will continue in place starting 9 p.m. tonight to 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, day to day until 5 a.m. on the morning of June 14th, 2020. In the night time of June 14th, the curfew will begin 10 p.m. through to 5 a.m. the following morning, day to day until 5 a.m on the morning of June 30th, 2020. The Prime Minister says licensed public passenger transport, state or privately owned, are allowed one hour after the end of the curfew to travel home from their last passenger drop-off. He says businesses should operate inside the curfew hours. Other than the general limits on the curfew hours, we encourage businesses and employees to optimize arrangements to increase productive use of time and safe travel. Public gathering and mask wearing protocols will remain in place until June 30, 2020. Mr. Holness says gatherings in public spaces should not exceed 10 people, but there are exemptions. Although social distancing and other protocols will apply, there will be exemptions for workplaces to facilitate the increased number of employees in the workplace and for companies holding their annual general meetings, AGMs. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement at a COVID-19 press briefing on Sunday at Jamaica House. Tourism is among the sector's hardest hit by COVID-19 pandemic, with several hotels and attractions having to scale down or close operations. We have more in this report. Following a record-breaking year in 2019, tourism receipts for January and February indicated that the sector was growing at a rate of 5.2% in 2020. Today, the industry, filled with uncertainty and economic challenges, is facing a new paradigm. So says Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett. Mr Bartlett pointed out that the industry's outturn for the first two months of the calendar year, January and February, were strong, with a 5.5% gross tourist arrivals. There were 1.25 million visitors. The country reportedly earned 859 million US dollars. However, as of March 10, the number of visitor arrivals fell to zero. Mr. Bartlett says protocols to facilitate the reopening of the tourism industry, which have been severely impacted by the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, have been drafted and are being reviewed by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The protocols, which are contained in a 122-page document, reportedly target all segments of the industry and are said to be the most rigorous to be found in the tourism industry worldwide. Covering every single element of stakeholdership activity in tourism. And very central to it all is the protection of the workers of the industry. And every effort is being made to ensure and indeed, I want to make the point that some of the protocols that the companies themselves have put forward, and I've seen a number of them by way of their, um, their, their uh, YouTube renditions of what their protocols are, that are well in excess and exceeds those that we have put forward in terms of how they are going to manage their space and more importantly provide the necessary COVID security equipment for the workers of the industry. The training that will be done, and in fact, we are rolling out a whole training program starting tomorrow, in addition to the online training which is now happening and the certification program that is being undertaken, providing uh, many of our workers already with certificates from recognized American entities like the American Restaurants Association, and the American Hotel and Lodging Education Institute. Those certifications have already been given to a number of the 7,000 tourism workers who are registered online for the programs that we have put forward. So we want to make the point that much more is going to be done 
Um, we're going to be encouraging uh, a level of, of what we call security overlaying within the industry to protect the, in, the, the workers in particular, but also to make the statement to the world that Jamaica is a COVID resilient destination. And that is to say, we don't have all the answers to everything, but we certainly have put in place references that you can make whenever there's an issue and whenever there's a problem. Tourism leaders across the Caribbean have been meeting to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on cruise shipping to the Caribbean and plans to revitalize the industry. We have more in this report. Globally, the Caribbean accounts for over 38% of the cruise market. The cruise industry reportedly contributes approximately $2 billion US dollars to the Caribbean each year. COVID-19 has dealt a severe blow to cruising to the Caribbean. It has resulted in a cessation of cruise lines, which has had a direct negative impact on ports across the region. What that means is that we have a direct impact on ports, certainly here in Barbados, in a number of areas besides the broader tourism input. And so we are going to be looking uh, throughout the region and certainly in Barbados around issues like um, what this means for port infrastructure, which is a big deal for all ports across the Caribbean. We are talking about things like the marine charges. What are the experiences that our tourism partners are expecting when they come through the region? The influence of the cruise industry is far reaching. Many Caribbean islands rely heavily on the positive multiplier effect cruise liners create. A fall in cruise tourism affects many who rely on tourism for their livelihoods. A number of measures are being examined to help the Caribbean cruise industry bounce back, including new revenue opportunities. What are the new revenue opportunities that will emerge out of a resumption of cruising? What will it look like given the erosion in market share? You've seen a 45% layoff uh, of Carnival Cruise Lines in the last week. You've seen uh, a number of cuts in the workforce at Royal Caribbean, the two largest entities, and you've seen a plummeting in their stock. Their stock. Uh, on the market. So what does that mean? What does that mean for their new models with the Caribbean? We're going to be having those conversations. For those of us that are home ports like Barbados, it means that there has to be a new relationship which evolves between airlift and cruising because we have the air to sea transactions. Our onshore activity, obviously, in terms of our pre and post cruising relationships with our hotels, what does that look like? The critical thing is going to be customer, consumer product satisfaction, satisfaction. We in the Caribbean have done an extraordinary job and we have been recognized publicly for our containment efforts. Every country in the region, we have been able to contain this thing and have been able to keep our populations as safe as possible in the face of what we're dealing with. So how do we use that now as part of our conversation going forward in terms of how we develop new protocols to treat to uh, receiving cruise ships again in a new COVID environment? And then of course, what does our destination offer in terms of new products? And that is a broader conversation with our tourism officials. And we're really looking forward to the resumption of those conversations. But beyond that, there are a couple of very practical operational considerations that we're looking at. Labor costs, fuel costs, general operational costs. What are the regulatory and environmental issues surrounding this? What does the maritime law say about this? Emission control. We are small states. We've been talking certainly here in Barbados a lot at the level of our prime minister extensively and globally on the issues of climate change and how they affect small states. How do we now engage with the cruise industry in a new environment, not just around environmental matters, but public health matters? Those are going to be some of the critical things going forward. Tourism leaders are reportedly working on common protocols that will take all the issues identified into account. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Carol Francis. Persons in Halfway Tree Square were on Monday gifted with masks and hand sanitizers by Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton. Dr. Tufton is calling for more personal responsibility in the fight against the novel coronavirus COVID-19. PBCJ's Gabrielle Thompson was on location and she filed this report. 
The work from home order expired May 31, 2020, and the Jamaican economy is slowly reopening. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says it is important to highlight the part personal responsibility plays in the fight against COVID-19. For his part, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton was on location in Halfway Tree on Monday to distribute hand sanitizers, masks, and educational materials to Jamaicans. He says it is important for persons to wear their masks in the fight against COVID-19. The health minister distributed approximately 3,000 masks. From the halfway tree transport center to the bus park, even to persons standing in line at the bank, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton distributed masks to those without. He says the end of the work from home order prompted the action. What we're doing today, myself and and the team from CERA, uh, the health promotion team, is basically uh, moving around in Halfway Tree Square, looking to see persons who are not wearing masks, uh, providing them with a mask. We're going to give out probably two or 3,000 masks today, this morning, and basically promoting the message that wearing masks in public spaces practicing social distancing, hand sanitization, all of this represents the new norm in the fight against COVID-19. As you know, the Prime Minister announced yesterday that effective today, June 1, there will be the, the, the work from home order would have expired. What we anticipate, therefore, is that more persons will be coming out to work to go to the physical space called work and as a consequence more will be taking public transport more will be moving from one place to the next there's going to be more congregating of persons and the possibility of the virus spreading is going to become uh, increased and so what we want is a messaging to the public to say please remember that part of the approach to reducing the risk of COVID-19 is to wear a mask when you're in public spaces. Dr. Tufton says regional health authorities across the island have been mandated to go into all town squares to promote the concept of wearing a mask in public spaces. However, the minister says there are no current plans in place to implement legislation for mask wearing. We have not discussed that at this point in time. What we are being governed by right now are the orders that the government takes a position on and, 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 and makes it mandatory through those orders which has expiration date or sunset clauses. Right now we believe that the threat of COVID-19 is still very real. We don't want Jamaicans to be complacent. We don't know what the future will bring. Maybe when there's a vaccine and the risk of COVID-19 is not as great then we won't have this, this challenge. But right now, we think it is very important for persons to remain vigilant and wearing a mask when you're in a crowded area is very, very important to that cause. And, that's, and that is what we will continue to promote for now. Dr. Tufton also had this message for Jamaicans. Proper wearing of the mask and, and the care. Right. So this idea of wearing a mask on your chin or on your forehead um, it's important that people realize that you take the mask off using this, the sides, you don't touch the mask and you put it on, right, by right? lifting it over the ears, pulling it up and making sure it's above the nose, very important. You don't handle it and you don't put it on your chin, you don't put it on your forehead, it's important because again, Frankly speaking, a mask can be a double-edged sword. If you don't use it properly, it could also be a problem for you. The health minister also highlighted the importance of mask wearing on public transportation, particularly buses. That is why the masks is so important, because we understand that, practically speaking, once persons start to move around and people start to congregate and people have to depend on public transport, even with the rules that are in effect, it is not going to always be possible for persons to observe some of those measures in terms of the six feet apart. I mean, we're here now and we're really not observing it, frankly speaking. But what we all can do as an added precaution is to wear the mask. And so the mask, to my mind, right now, 
is perhaps your best defense plus sanitizing periodically so the hand sanitizer which we all should travel with um, the social distancing or the physical distancing becomes difficult in a number of contexts and we have to accept that as a reality but I, I think we can do we have a lot of power over ourselves to, to have a mask in our possession to wear it properly and of course to apply the, the sanitization method this man was the recipient of a mask. He has words of advice for others. Yeah, we have to keep it on because we have to make sure say, everybody is right and we don't catch a sickness. Yeah, we have to encourage everybody in the world say it's safe for us to wear in the mask. Uh, the disease it can affect it a lot, so we have to be careful and be smart. As at June 1, Jamaica has 586 COVID-19 cases with 311 recoveries. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Gabrielle Thompson. The Independent Commission of Investigations says it's conducting a thorough investigation into the fatal shooting of 44-year-old Susan Bogle in August Town on Wednesday, May 27. The woman, who was physically challenged, was reportedly shot in bed during a joint police-military operation in the community. Prime Minister Andrew Honus addressed the incident during a digital press conference. Jamaica has sacrificed much. We've gone through a rough period in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s in trying to establish in law and in process that when someone's life is taken, especially if it is by the state, then there must be established protocols with a higher standard of investigation. And these protocols have been operating now since the passage of the Indicom Act. But there is still a sense where people feel they don't get social justice. And it is imperative that the government at all times reassures all citizens that the government cares. The government will ensure that nothing in these matters will be hidden, will be swept under the carpet, that, not, that the social and economic status of the victim does not determine the outcome of justice. He also shared details of a phone call he had with Ms. Bogle's son. Uh, what I felt to be a, a very good talk with this young man and gave him the assurance that in no way, shape or form will there be any attempt to cover up, that we will seek to have justice done in this matter. Indicom has been in the community daily seeking viable information since the incident. What has transpired so far, as they have confirmed, is that four soldiers involved were taken off frontline duties. They were interviewed by Indicom by the Friday. All the weapons involved were boxed by Indicom and are awaiting ballistics testing. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to contact Indicom at 876-968-8875 or 876-968-1932 or WhatsApp at 876-553-5555. Time now for the business report with Gabriel Thompson. In Friday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 3,511 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 80 stocks, of which 39 advanced, 30 declined, and 11 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 4 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services Limited, Caribbean Cement Company, and Caribbean Cream. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper, and Barita Investments. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Jamaica, Berger Paints Jamaica, and CAC 2000 Limited. Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 79.8 million units, followed by Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with 23.7 million units and QWI Investments Limited with 1.5 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Friday, May 29 ended trading at $143.48. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $104.95. 
The pound sterling traded for $179.08 and the euro ended trading at $161.12. Oil prices were steady on Monday, helped by reports that OPEC and Russia were closer to a deal on extending oil cuts, but held back by renewed tension between the United States and China. Brent crude futures gained three cents to settle at thirty-seven dollars eighty-seven cents a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures were down twenty-seven cents to thirty-five dollars twenty-two cents a barrel. That's it for the business report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Jamaicans are adjusting to the new reality of life in the midst of the novel coronavirus pandemic, including enjoying some of the finest performances from reggae's greats right here on PBCJ's Sunday Live. Sunday Live consists of the streaming event and a linear broadcast on PBCJ and all cable networks that carry PBCJ. The virtual concert is available online at PBCJ's YouTube and Facebook pages. Sunday Live has given some of the finest reggae acts a means of bonding with their fans while wooing others. This week's show featured Wayne Marshall and others. Reporter Marlon Samuels has the highlights of the live stream, which was also a means of raising much needed funds to purchase PPE for frontline workers in Montego Bay, St. James. London Murray played a major role in organizing the Sunday Live events, which airs live from Pier 1. The growth is continuous, and so I'm really grateful to everybody involved. And I must say a big, 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 big special shout out to John Swaby himself, because without that man, <laughs> none of this would be possible. So big up, John. I know you're a man of a very, very few words, but big up yourself. Mommy. Shout out to the Mad Vision people. Yeah, so you know, the production there. team, searching, Laura, David, the engineer, the steam mm. team band. Big up everybody, sure. everybody watching at home, big up mommy, big up Auntie Sonia, everybody, big up on yourself. We'll be back with season two. two by the end of June. Sunday Live has been giving viewers an unapparelled live music experience. Over the past nine weeks, some of Jamaica's top reggae artists gave their time and talent to entertain lovers of reggae music across the world. At the same time, they have been raising money to purchase personal protective equipment, PPE, for frontline workers at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay. This week's show kicked off with singer, songwriter, producer, Sheen. And I say, ooh, who could have thought I'd get you? Viewers were then treated to the flawless vocals of Montego Bay songbird, Rosh Rebel. I concentrate, tears in my eyes, but my eyes on the prize. I pick give the dream my life. All of the stars don't hear me, I go reach them. All of the lessons from me learn me, I go teach them. I have a dream, send me up here to make it. I have a dream and nobody can take it from me. When Marshall's set was riveting, he treated viewers to an impressive virtual performance. Sunday night. There's no better way to start than a prayer. We pray for guidance and protection in these times. Sunday life. Lord, I pray, I honor your name, deliver your mercy whenever I fall. You lift me up, glory to thee. Our Redeemer, saving grace. I know I'm not worthy. No, sir. Wheel it, wheel it, wheel it, wheel it. When Marshall serenaded fans with hit after hit after hit. Crazy girls are road, I run me down. 
But I'm not going to make none of them drop you Why? Because none of them can compare to my wife. You wait. I just be good old wife. I just be good, good, hey, good, 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 good old wife. Good, 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 she alone be coming home to every night. Every night. I just be good old wife. I just be good old wife. Jesse Bell wash up the life. Wife, you walk out to keep this marriage standing strong. You know it's crucial. So me now go follow a friend, go look no loose, girl. My baby love me and she know the feelings mutual. So I me and me good old wife are far as usual. Even though them mix me up and try all kind of thing. They would have want me to write them ring him. I said text and pick. Because they want a me chin for that shrimpy ring. Well, me don't know what they're talking about. You have the key for the car and the house. Them can't get you out. I be an art in the end, no. I just be good old. I just be good old. Why? She alone me coming home to every night. The curtains came down on one of the best virtual reggae shows the world has seen on Sunday. They will be raised soon when season two of Sunday Live comes on stream. We find ourselves in a sticky situation. This world crisis affecting every nation. I, the whole world, I cry. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. Is a thing of the past. Right now, keep your distance and put on a mask. No, I. No bother wants a higher buy. Oh, oh. No car, no drive, no bike, no ride. Bro, God, I tell you, no safe to stay inside. No, I. Curfew, wild and wide. Worldwide, so when me know things I get from bad to worse, when the pastor can't preach in church, no why? Huh. The offering pan dry, cause everybody talking about Corona, 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 Corona. And that's the news on PBCJ. Thanks so much for watching.